Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about naming acids. So we already talked about naming uh, very simple molecules, and so we kind of ignored anything that started with an H. And the reason why we ignored things that started with H were because we said that anytime you see something that starts with an H, chances are it's going to be an acid. So they always start with an H at the beginning of their uh, formula because the H plus ion is kind of what normally makes things acids. So, like it says, there are some obvious examples that are going to be exceptions to this rule. So H2O, I mean, water starts with an H, but it's not named like an acid. Or hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, starts with an H, but is not traditionally named like an acid. So the first thing you need to know are that there are two types, and I put types in quotation marks. And the reason why is because um, it's hard to distinguish between these, but there are other ways of breaking things into different groups with acids. Um, more on that later on. Uh, but to start with, let's start with like the two big categories. We have binary acids where you only have hydrogen and one other element, and that's it. Or um, we have oxy acids, which contain hydrogen, a polyatomic ion that contains oxygen. So remember, polyatomic ions have multiple parts to them, right? They have multiple elements. So binary acids are like the simple ones you see. Oxy acids include polyatomic ions that contain oxygen. So here's an example. I have HCl here. This is my hydrogen and this is my Cl. Hydrochloric acid, that's a binary acid. We just have hydrogen plus some other element. Now, oxy acids, on the other hand, contain multiple things. This is acetic acid, and that's the primary one in vinegar. These red circles are oxygens. These are our hydrogens, and then these are carbons. So again, much more complicated, but they're called oxy acids because they contain oxygens included with these hydrogens and other elements. All right, so how do you name a binary acid? All binary acids start with the prefix hydro. So that's why it's hydrochloric acid. Um, it's because, again, all binary acids that contain only two elements have to start with hydro. And then how do we end them? They always end in ic acid. So that's why it's hydrochloric acid and not hydrochlorine acid or hydro, I don't know, um, chlor acid or something like that, okay? Or chloride acid, maybe. Now, the root word depends on the identity of the non-hydrogen element. So just like in hydrochloric acid, we took the chlor from chlorine to let you know that it's chlorine that's the other element that is the non-hydrogen containing component. Also, just like we did with ionic compounds, you still have to crisscross charges in order to get the correct formulas. So here are three very simple examples. Notice that we have hydrogen in each case, so that tells us an acid here. But then we also just have a single element. We have either uh, chloride or sulfide or phosphide or something like that. But again, remember that all we're going to do is take a root normally from those words. So spelling gets a little meh because sometimes they take the entire word, sometimes they take a portion of the root, sometimes they take and change a couple of letters. So it just depends. But I wanted to at least give you an idea of how you would name these kinds of things. So no matter what, you're always going to have hydro something ic acid. So I have chlorine here or chloride. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chlor part and it's going to become hydrochloric acid. Here again, I have sulfur. And so you might think, oh, is it like, are we just going to take the sulf part and drop the er? They actually don't drop anything when you have sulfur, so it's hydrosulfuric acid. Again, notice the entire word sulfur is there. It's not really a root word. They just took the element itself and put it into the name. Or this one, right? So again, we have hydrosomethingic acid, and I've got a P here, and so people would say, okay, wait, that's phosphorus, so what are we going to do? Are we going to take and drop the us? Um, and we do. It's hydrophosphoric acid. All right. So again, just realize that when you're making these, when you're actually naming these acids, I will probably be correcting your spelling for some of them, just so that you have an idea of, okay, great, this is the root part that we take for these acids. What about oxy acids? So 
oxy acids can be built from ions that end in ite or end in ate. So for example, right, all of these contain oxygens. So that means we could use them. So we have carbonate, nitrite, nitrate, sulfite, sulfate. These are just examples. But again, some of them end in ite, some of them end in ate. So there are two sets of rules, one for if they end in ite and one if they end in ate. If they end in ite, you drop the ending, so you drop the ite, and you change it to us acid. On the other hand, if it ends in ate, you drop the ate, and you call it ic acid, okay? So notice oxy acids never have hydro in front of them. So a lot of mistakes get made when we try to combine the rules for binary acids with oxy acids, and they are named differently. Okay, let's do some examples. These ones are normally a little bit more difficult. Okay, so all of these are acids because they start with H. Next, I have NO3, right? So in case you forgot, NO3 minus is nitrate. So if it ends in 8, I drop the 8 and I add ic acid. So I know it's going to be ic acid. When I drop the 8 from nitrate, that becomes nitric acid. What about SO3? We didn't have to memorize SO3, but SO3 is sulfite. Okay, so it ends in ite, that means it's going to be an us acid. And then just like before, you have to think, okay, great, what are we going to actually, you know, kind of drop or use? But just like when we were looking at hydrosulfuric acid, they actually add in some letters. So instead of just, you know, sulfous acid, they put sulfurous acid just so that it sounds a little nicer and it matches the other ones that we have when we're doing hydro you know, um, names. Next, PO4, that's phosphate. So again, we would drop the eight. And just like in this example here, they want it to sound consistent. So it becomes an ic acid, but it's phosphoric acid. Again, if we were to actually drop the eight, it would be phosphic acid. But that doesn't sound as nice and it doesn't match the previous kind of hydro rules there. So we just say phosphoric acid. Next, let's see if we can do with one less oxygen. So that means that's phosphite. This becomes an us acid, so that would be phosphorus acid. C2H3O2, that's acetate. So we drop the eight, that becomes an ic acid. It's acetic acid, that's vinegar. All right, so that was it. Again, a lot of spelling things in this one. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.